One of the big complaints that I hear from people when they email me, marketthirdshotsports.com, or DM me, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, is, Mark, the people I play with, they are bangers. They don't slow down the game. We don't get our long dinking rallies. When I watch the pros, the pros have these great long rallies. We never have that where I play. Okay, I hear this quite a lot from people, and usually they're kind of disappointed. They want to have those longer dinking rallies. So why don't we take a look at one of the things that separates the stronger players who have these long dinking rallies with everybody else. When many of us think about high-level pickleball, we imagine long dinking rallies. All four players up near the net, playing these low and slow balls with their forehands and backhands, often hitting the balls in the kitchen and having these really long, sometimes quite fun rallies. But for many of us, reality is very different from this. Instead of having these long extended dinking rallies, we get these bang bang plays where the exchange is over pretty quickly, sometimes without even a single dink being hit. So let's understand a little bit, what is the difference between the high level players who have these long dinking rallies and the rest of us? The first thing to remember is that there isn't a right way to play pickleball. There's no platonic ideal for how pickleball should be played, despite what some people will say. When you watch elite players have these long dinking rallies, they're doing so not because they're adhering to some ideal of how pickleball should be, but because a dink is a tactically smart choice in a specific situation. When your opponents hit a good low ball, forcing you to hit up, you have to be very careful. If you hit the ball with a lot of speed, it's likely to fly out the back of the court. And if you hit with a medium amount of speed, it's likely to sit up high, having a big arc that your opponents can pounce on. So when you receive that low ball near the net, the smart thing to do most of the time is to play a good low and slow ball yourself, a dink. By responding to a low ball with a dink, you're forcing your opponents to hit up. And now they have a problem. If they hit with much speed, the ball goes out. So smart players, when they receive this low ball, once again, respond with a dink. And this is why you see pros have long dinking rallies. They're very good at recognizing the situation they're in when they have to hit up and they're good at controlling the speed of the ball so it stays low to their opponent. And so what you eventually get are these long extended dinking battles. Again, this isn't because this is the right way to play pickleball, but because the opponents are putting each other in a position where a dink really is the smart tactical choice. So what is it that leads to this low ball in the first place? Well, really, it's a drop. And while a drop could come at any time throughout the point, the third shot drop is a common pattern that we see a lot. Players are good at hitting these balls, which are essentially like slow drives, forcing the opponents to hit up. So this pattern of serve, return, and then a drop really is what gets the dinking rally going. Again, a dink is a response to a low ball, and a drop, when it's hit well, is that low ball. So if you're someone who's hoping to have more dinking in your pickleball game, don't be upset at players who speed things up too quickly. Realize that a dink is a good response to a drop. And if you want to be a strong player who encourages these dinking rallies, you don't need to make rules that everyone only has to dink or you've got to hit a certain number of dinks before you're allowed to speed things up. No, what you need to do is to make sure that you can hit good, consistent drops, that you can force your opponents to hit up and they will very quickly learn that if they hit the ball with speed, they're going to be in trouble. Instead, they're going to play a dink of their own, and if they do it well, well, the dinking battle will ensue. Okay, so there you go. You aren't going to get dinks unless you get drops, so it's going to be important for a whole bunch of reasons, but including if you want to have more dinking rallies, that you can play a consistent drop. Usually a third shot drop, could be a fifth shot drop. The point is you've got to be able to get that ball low, low and slow. Put your opponents in a position where a dink really does make sense. Now, if they're not going to dink, they're not going to dink and they're going to pop it up and you're going to put it away, right? But eventually they're going to get tired of that. They're going to realize you've put them in a position where dinking makes sense. They're going to start to play dinks. You can start to play dinks and then everyone is just dinking around. 